بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay, the next thing we'll see what is NAT exactly. As I said, NAT stands for Network Address Translation. It's a process of translating your private IP addresses uh, to to get translated into a registered public IP addresses. Like I already said, an example. So mostly in the production scenarios nowadays, to minimize the uh, wastage of the IPs. So let's say I have hundreds of users or thousands of users. So internally within the organization, we'll be using a private IP. But when the traffic is going from my LAN, when it is reaching the internet or when it is leaving my router, then basically the source address will be translated to a public IP address. So which means if you take this example here, let's say this is a client which is using the IP address of 10.1.1.1. And this client is using this source address and it is trying to access a website on the internet, let's say, uh, cisco.com let's say assume the ip address of this public server is 170.1.1.1 so normally when the packet travels generally the source address you will have a source address is once 10 dot network and the destination is 170 that is your actual cisco.com website so when the traffic is leaving so it comes with this address when it hits this router then this router is going to translate the source address so the source address of 10.1.1.1 will change to some public IP address, some public address, and this is actually the translation to 200.1.1.1. So, which means when the packet is leaving the router, the source address is replaced with 200, which means now the source address is 200.1.1.1, and the destination remains the same. So, the destination address is the actual server, and then it leaves because by default these addresses are private and they are not recognized on the internet. So when the traffic leaves and reaches the server and when the server is replying back, so basically it's going to reply back to this destination that is 200.111, which is the address used for this host, the private address. And once it hits back the NAT router again, when the traffic is returning back, again, it will translate this public address into a private address again and route the packet to the, to the actual host, of course, to the switch and then to the actual host. Okay, so this is what NAT, the packet flow, we'll, we'll see anyway when we get into the configurations. And why we do this? Because the public IPs are private IPs, sorry, which is refined in the RFC 1918. Basically, these addresses are not routable on the internet. So by default, the service provider have a policy like they, they filter the routes which are coming with anything in the range of private IP addresses. Because normally IP addresses are usable, but default policy will not allow those routes. Again, in order to communicate with the internet, we need to have a registered public IP addresses. So if you want to connect to the internet, there are two solutions. Either you use a public IP and then translate the traffic without any without any NAT or just simply send. And practically in today's networks, we'll be using a private, but when they when they leave the router, we are going to translate them into the public IP addresses. So next thing, what are the devices uh, we can configure the NAT? We can configure them on the routers. So the NAT device can be a router, a Cisco router or any other router. Or it can also be a firewall. You can also configure the NAT on the firewall. Like generally in, in most of production scenarios, you still have a firewall. Basically, that is your edge device. And then you translate here instead of here. You can do that. Or it, it can be also on a server operating system. Like you can in a small companies, what you can do is you can configure a server with two NIC cards, basically one NIC connecting to the LAN and another NIC. So you can make this device as a NAT. So this is more applicable in a small size organizations where you don't want to use a dedicated router or a firewall. In that case, probably in our CCNA topics, we'll be seeing how we can configure the NAT on the Cisco iOS routers. But again, probably if you're going with uh, CCNP security concepts, then basically you will also see how you can configure the NAT concepts on the uh, firewalls as well. And again, as I said, it allows enterprises to use the private IP addresses, which means within the LAN, we we'll still be using a private IPs and then still we can access internet because of the translation of the private IP to the public IP. Okay. 
again as i said nat will change the source address like in our case the source address is changed from 10111 to 200111 in this example which i have sh showed in the picture here so the next thing we'll see what are the different scenarios we use nat of course one of the main scenario as i said to mitigate the ip ipv for address reflection what we'll be doing is we'll be using a private ips in our lan let's say i have thousands of users and i can use a private ip address and when they get translated i can use a one single public ip also so with the help of pat we'll see that example as well so that is one of the main reason we use nat because we we don't want you know thousands of public ips here we just want to translate with a one single public ip that is one reason and internally maybe you want to use internally a private ip addresses that is one more reason again in this case and other possibility side is like even you are translating you also get some kind of security because whatever the internal networks we are using that will be hidden so it adds some kind of security as well increases the security by hiding your internal network and the other possibility is if you have some kind of overlapping networks within the organization or while merging with some other organizations like you can take an example here like let's say there is a company abc and this company abc is using some network 10.10.13. subnet and this company merged with some other company let's say xyz so these two companies merges normally let's say because within the company you you have the same overlapping networks or the same networks is rare actually so maybe designing issues in that case but generally let's say these two companies merges now when they decide to merge then then they realize that they are using some kind of private network here in both the companies and both are using the same network let's say but now you still want to communicate between these two in that case what i can do is uh, instead of changing the ips we can translate this addresses when they go from here and reach they can use some other subnet let's say 150 dot subnet and while this users when they communicate with this one they can use 160 dot subnet something like that so basically at the back end they are using the same subnets but they when they are trying to talk to each other they are using some different subnets so that is one another reason where in the kind of advanced uh, scenario where you may see the nat translations required but the most common uh, scenario as i said you are hiding your internal servers or internal addresses and or the private ip addresses should get translated to a public ip so we'll see it in the different types of nats uh, in the next examples